Almighty God, who art in heaven, thank you for your mercy, your steadfastness, and for being with us the past week. Thank you for your goodness and blessings that you have bestowed upon us that we may intercede and seek your grace. Lord, we ask for your forgiveness for the wrongs we have done against you and the fellow believers. We as a church come before your throne of grace, seeking your mercy as we apologize. Father God, we praise you for the blessed funeral, the first of June of late linen as he went to be with you in heaven for sending your comfort to you, especially to the lead Lenin's family. May their family continue to find favor in your sight and may you be the center of their family. Father, we humans make plans, but success is only through you. We submit the installation program of senior pastor the next Sunday. We seek your mercy for the NMM staff as they will be traveling from Dimapur this week for the installation program. May your blessings be upon the program. Father, we submit the upcoming program of working youth and youth fellowship NCF the 10th of June. We pray for your leading and guidance. Father, we pray for your intervention in the state of Manipur as the two communities continue to wage war against one another. We pray for your divine healing and forgiveness as Manipur seeks peace and normalcy in the state. Let your will be done in Manipur in your due time. Give strength to all the tribals, the spirit of perseverance as they continue to face the hatred from the Maitais. You have promised that no weapon formed again shall prevail over your people. Make haste to intervene and bring healing to Manipur. Merciful Lord, we offer a prayer for your grace and healing to be with all those who have suffered loss and injuries from the train accident in Odisha. May you bring healing to the lows as hundreds were killed in the accidents. Lord, we know that you are with us. We ask for your anointing upon your servant, our associate Pastor Dindu, who will be bringing your word to us today. Let the word spoken by him speak to us, renew our hearts, reveal to us more of who you are as we listen to your word. Father, only you know what lies ahead, and we pray that your will be done. Keep love before our minds and the guiding lights before our lives, committing the rest of the programs into your mighty hands. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. Church, please be seated. You may also stay connected with us uh, through our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Uh, moving on, now I would like to call the ushers to come forward for the offering. And also I would now like to give time to Ms. Sochan for the offertory prayer and Mr. Soles for offertory hymn. Please take your time respectively. Gracious Lord, you have blessed us with such love and goodness. Lord, we thank you for the sustenance of food and water, and we cherish the love of family and friends. Lord, we offer these gifts with thankful heart and in joyous praise. Lord, we surrender our whole beings to you with worship and in gladness. Lord, may this offering extend the work of your kingdom in your church, in your community, and in this beautiful world which you have made. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Fearing higher clouds 
pastor to come and take his time, Pastor Dindu, for commissioning of our assistant pastor, as well as after which I asked the ushering team to come and um, take your time for song presentation. Church, we are gathered today to receive a gift from God once again. Last Sunday, we received a gift from God from above in the form of our new Sunday School coordinator. We praise God for His unending supply to our needs. And today, we are here uh, to give thanks, to give thanks to God for giving another blessing in the form of our assistant pastor. We are going to commission our intern pastor, Lungria Ding Dang, to the office of assistant pastor in our church. So I would like to request our intern pastor, Mr. Lungria, to come forward. Yes, um, our pastor's uh, face is not, I know, uh, someone who is strange to us, but we have been seeing him every, every day, every Sunday. We are thankful to his service, to his commitment, to the way that you have served the Lord and the church and Sheikh Pune. And we would like to sow our token of love and appreciation to him by giving him a bouquet of flowers. I request you tell our outreach call leader to come and hand over to him. Yes, uh, for the church who knows our pastor and who also not very familiar with him, I would like to give a brief introduction about uh, our Pastor Lungria Ndang. He, he hails from uh, the district called Perrin. He comes from Perrin Town, Naglen. Uh, he is associated, or he is a permanent uh, church member of his local church at Perrin, Perrin Ki Buzeng Baptist Church. And he graduated his BA from Pakai Christian College, and after which he came to Pune in the year 2018 to pursue his theological studies at Union Biblical Seminary. And during his time uh, in seminary, he served our church as the prayer call leader from 2020 to 21. And in the year 2021 to 22, he also served the church as the chairperson of the core team. And after his completion of uh, Bachelor of Divinity in UBS, he joined our church as a full-time staff. And he came in as the intern pastor. And he has served for one year, and we have seen uh, how he has serve the church with pure joy, the way that he have committed his life to God. And we have seen him, how he have guided us and suffered us. And we are so grateful to him for his commitment. And also we praise God for the way that you have guided him and led him thus far. Yes, he is someone who loves the Lord, who have committed his life for the full-time ministry, and we want him to continue serving the Lord in, in, here in our church and Sierra Pune. And we want him to serve with more authority in shepherding the church, in sharing the word to all of us, in, 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 uh, in leading us in prayer time, and in also in fellowshipping with, the, with one another. So today, as the leadership of this church, the pastoral team, the board of trustees, and the co-leaders have anonymously agreed 
to commission our intern pastor, Mr. Lungria Ding Dang, as the assistant pastor of this church. Um, we, we want to wish him the very best for the, for the days ahead of him with the new responsibility. And I would like to encourage our pastor, Lungria, and also the church through this scripture. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 to 13, it says, So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. And this is the word of God. And as he take up the new responsibility, may God always be with him, be his light, uh, to show him the way to lead all of us and to separate us. And also to the church, I would like to remind all of us to continue to support him, encourage him, and also uh, be the members to follow whatever he will be guiding us. Therefore, as our pastor Lungria Ding Ndang is being presented before the body of believers this afternoon, on this very day of the Lord, the 4th of June, 2023, I, in the presence of the leaders and the congregation of NCF Pune, commission Mr. Lungria Ding Dang as the assistant pastor of this church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I would like to request the pastoral team members and the board of trustees to come forward and to surround our dear pastor to say a prayer of blessing and to lay our hands on him. I also would like to request the congregation to join us in, in praying, in saying the prayer of blessing to our dear pastor. Kindly raise your hands for him and say the prayer. So shall we all pray. Our most gracious heavenly father, we thank you for the gifts that you have showered upon us. Lord, all the good gifts, all the good things that we receive comes from you. And Lord, today we receive this blessing for Naga Christian Fellowship Pune in the form of our assistant pastor, Lungria Ding Dang. Lord, you have called him to be a minister, to be a servant in your ministry, in your blind year. Lord, you have responded to that calling and your calling is the highest calling. And Lord, we thank you for the way that you have reached out to him, for the way that you have called him, assigned him here in this church. Lord, he has been a blessing in the past years, and he has faithfully served you as an instant, in, uh, uh, intern pastor uh, for, for one good year. Lord, we have received so many blessings under his leadership, Lord, you have been faithful in carrying out his duties. Lord, that blessings, that strength comes from you. And all the things that you have done for him all these years, we thank you and we praise you. Lord, as we have commissioned him to take up the new responsibility as the assistant pastor of this church, O oh Lord God, may you anoint him afresh so that he will take up this responsibility with power and strength 
that comes from you. O oh Lord, the wisdom and understanding that he needs, may you supply all his needs. O oh Lord God, um, help him so that he will prepare himself, so that he will be equipped in all things that is required to shepherd us, to guide us, and to lead us, and to teach us. And to that end, we commit and we command our Pastor Lungria into your mighty hands. Lord, we thank you for the way that you have blessed him and for the way that you have gifted to the church to lead and to suffer Naga Christian Fellowship Pune. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yes, sir. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Okay, yes, sir. Um, church as a sign of accepting our pastor, his leadership, shall we put our hands together. Thank you. I would like to request the uh, ushering team to come and uh, present us the song. Be a sun, the sun, the sun, the paper. 
Luke chapter 3, verse 7 to 18. Sorry, 18. Then he said to the multitudes that came out to be baptized by him, Brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Therefore bear fruits were to your repentance, and do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. And even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which does not peer, bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So the people asked him, saying, What shall we do then? He answered and said to them, He who has two tunics, let him give to him who has none. And he who has food, let him do likewise. Then tax collectors also came to be baptized and say to him, Teacher, what shall we do? And he say to them, Collect no more than what is appointed for you. Likewise, the soldiers asked him, saying, what, And what shall we do? So he say to them, Do not intimidate anyone or accuse falsely, and be contained with your wages. Now as the people were in expectation, and all reasoned in their hearts about John, whether he was the Christ or not, John answered, saying to all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I is coming, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to lose. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fane is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor and gather the wheat into his barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. And with many other exhortations he preached to the people. This is the word of God. Christians or believers are called to be different from the rest of the world. You know, we are called to be different you know, in, in, in our religious, in religious life as well or in the irreligious life also. We are called to be different. But unfortunately, sometimes we Christians doesn't appear to be different than anyone else. We hear the word of God. We come together. We have Bible study time. We pray. And sometimes we fail to the calling to be different from the rest of the world. Once a church leader was driving on the road and he come across in a point where there is a traffic jam. So it's a point where there was a standstill. He cannot move, he cannot go back, but the one who is behind him keep horn, honking. And uh, he was annoyed. He couldn't take it anymore, so he came out from his car and he walked behind, walked behind, and he went up to that driver. He opened the door and he punched him on the face. And then while re returning back to his car, he happened to see the bumper of his car in the sticker with this written, Hong, if you love Jesus. No, many a times, no, we, many a times we hear the word of God. Many a times we have heard about repentance. Many a times we're being called, being taught to love one another, but we fail that. So here, John, John the baptizer, is preaching of repentance in a direct response to human uh, behavior, to a human behavior that ignores the appropriate attitude of any believers. John the baptizer, he's preaching here, you know, directly dealing with the human behaviors that ignores the the appropriate, inappropriate attitude of any believers towards or his hard neighbors, fail to laugh, fail to have compassion, fail to have respect for one another, fail to be generous, and not only that, leaving behind the teachings of hospitality, kindness, and forgiveness. In the midst of that, John the baptizer is preaching 
So when he begins the preaching from verse 7, unlike any other preachers who talks, who brings out with illustration, who starts with a, you know, a joke, a simple joke, but he directly went into it. John the baptizer, he started his preaching, calling the people, you brute of vipers, or calling them as a, a bunch of uh, snakes. You know, if starting a preaching or sermon in that way, you know, it will give an alarming to the congregation. But John the baptizer, with the authority, he started. Let me read it out for all of us. From verse 7, let me read out this verse 7. John said to the crowds, coming out to be baptized by him, you brute of vipers who weren't, who want you to flee from the coming rot? No, he started with this phrase, you brood of vipers or you bunch of snakes. No, it could be something that hurts the sentiments of his listeners at that time. It could bring back to the time of Genesis. No, the snake is the one that comes and then lure Adam and Eve to fall into sins. And also he says this, he asks this question, who asks you, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Similar like when God asks Adam and Eve, who asks you or who asks you to, uh, who, who warned you that you are naked? No, God asks Adam and Eve, who warned you that you are naked? So it brings back, you know, to that time in the Genesis. It could be alarming. It could be a shock to the people or to the listeners of John the Baptizer at that time. So from verses 7 to 9, I would like to bring it out as, as uh, John the Baptizer's warning, as a warning to the people. How did he warn? He warned by calling the people, you brood of vipers, and who warned you to flee? No, the people, it says they ran to him. They come to him to be baptized. They come to him to be baptized. Not that they really repented, but they want to flee from the coming of God's wrath. No, by just simply submitting to the rituals, to the religious rituals, but by not repenting by not sowing any 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 uh, form of manifestation of repentance they just want to be submitted in the in the re religious rituals rather than sowing any manifestation of repentance so that's why John the baptizer asked them who came forward for baptizing who warned you to flee from the rat. So, church, I would like to bring this out to all of us. Many a times we thought that repentance is just simply just changing our lives. It is way beyond that. We thought that if we repent, no, it's just about coming to church, attending in the fellowship, being there in the Bible study, and so on. But it is way beyond that. John the baptizer, when he called out for repentance, he called out for the change of their lifestyle, to repent, to turn from their ways at the same time, to come and to turn to God. Repentance without God will be meaningless. We might repent, but for a brief moment, we might change our life, but we will come back to the original place where we have been living. But when we repent, we change our life, and we turn to God, that will be completed. Many a times we feel that, we felt that because of the works of our parents, 
we might be blessed or we might be accepted in the kingdom of God. Because of my parents and such and such is in, as a pastor or a minister in the church, you know, I, I, one way or the other, I will be saved. God will show, us, show me favor. No, it is not about that. Even in today's worship, you know, our worship leaders say, in raising our voice, saying hallelujah i cannot make you to do that it is you alone who have to come forward when we look back in the story of mary and martha when they were uh, opening their house showing their hospitality to jesus and his disciples mary was busy arranging for so many things i mean martha was busy arranging for with many things but mary was close to Jesus, listening to the words that comes out from his master. And what did Jesus say at that time? Mary have taken what is best. So the best thing that has been taken by our parents or by a strong believers, no, it will not save us. It will not give us salvation. The salvation of our parents, no, it will be for them. It will not save you. The salvation of the church leaders, committed believers, it is only for themselves. It is not for their family members. It is not for their friends. It is not even for those who are very close to him. But the faith that you have, the belief that you have in God, it is only for you. And that will save you. And that will give you the salvation and eternal life. So when we read further in this uh, verses uh, 7 to 9. They were counting their genealogies that I came from, my, from the, for, the forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, I came from such and such line. And they were counting as such that they are blessed, that they will be accepted in the kingdom of God. But John the baptizer, he revealed at that time that counting the genealogies that such and such person, my bloodline is from such and such will not save you at all, will not give you the salvation to enter the kingdom of God. Only true repentance, only genuine repentance will be able to save us and enable to come into the kingdom of God. So he also said, the acts is at hand. That's what says in verse, um, in verse 9. The axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into fire. And that's what John the Baptizer you know, talk about. You know, it, it, in, in other words, it means judgment is at hand. Judgment will come to all of us. There is judgment. No one will escape that. That's what he's saying. Or, or the other, he's saying that when Christ comes, no, he's going to cut out the roots of how the Jews people, how the people of Israel at the time were counting the genealogies, that they will cut out their Jewish heritage. And that one will not be able to save them when the time comes, when the judgment comes. So the, the same things applies to all of us. Being a believer, being a Christian will not, a simple, being a simply being as Christians, just for the namesake, will not be able to save us. I came from a Christian family. I came from a Christian state. We have been Christian for such and such generation. Not counting in that way without true repentance will not be able to save us. And from verses three, uh, chapter 3, verses 10 to 14, 14 uh, John's the baptizer, he gave his uh, instruction how to go about with it. When John the baptizer, he preached this to the people, to his listeners. You know, in the preceding verses, they said, they said, what should we do then? The crowd asked. What should we do then? They were doing in that way. So what should we do then? The crowd, the entire, the entire listeners, they came forward and asked, what should we do then? So, so John the baptizer, he, he brings it out, you know, some few things. 
which is mentioned here, how, how to go about with their life. That is to produce fruit in keeping with repentance. That is to produce fruit with, uh, in keeping with repentance. Or bear word, bear, bears fruit worthy of repentance. So like I mentioned, just simply repentance is not enough. But we need to have a close communion with God. Only then we will be, our repentance will be completed. So bear fruit worthy of repentance. That's what John the Baptizer taught them. John gave instructions about, about how they should live, about how they should live. And when we summarize this, you know, a tax collector come, when what should I do? A soldier came, what should I do? The crowd asked, what should we do? And he gave that instructions. And we can summarize this, that John was calling the people to true righteousness, to true righteousness. And we can summarize this in this way. He wanted the people to do four things, to do four things. That is, be generous, be honest, to be just, and be content. When the crowd say, what should we do? They say, share what you have to the people around you. Those who are in need, share with them. That's what he instructed, to be generous. And when the tax collector came and said, what should we do? He instructed them, be honest. Collect whatever the government has instructed you to do. Don't go beyond with that. Work with honesty. And when the soldier came, and what should we do? He said, be just, not to oppress the people. Not to the, oppress the people, but to, but to, uh, but, and also to be content. He says in this verse, um, please give me a moment. Yes, in verse 14, then the soldiers came and asked him, and what should we do? He replied, don't extort money and don't accuse people falsely. Be content with what you pay. Don't extort. Be just. No, don't oppress the people. And don't extort. But be content with your pay, with what you have. So to summarize this, we can give uh, in four points. That is to be generous, be honest, be just, and be content. So the same thing can apply to all of us. We work in different sectors. Some of us work in the private sectors. Some of us work in the government sectors. Some could be, uh, some could be in the armed forces. Some could be uh, you know, a, a teacher. Some could be a student. Wherever the profession is, you know, the instruction came to us very clearly. To be honest, to be generous, to be just, and to be content. No, in this society, we are, we see so many things around us. Corruptions, you name it, so many things. In time of, we, we see poverty around us. We see dishonesty, injustice, terrorism is rising, and moral laxity. No, it just destroys our families, our nations, our states, it is so much. That is so much that is happening. No, I came from, a, from the state of Manipur. You know, getting a job there, you know, we have to pay a bribe. Not a small amount, but a huge amount to get a job. So I used to tell my family members, what's the point of spending you know, a huge amount of money just to get a, a small position. How about, you know, you follow the teachings of the Bible. How about the money that you're going to bribe someone, use that, you know, and live, a, live with that, make a life of a, with that amount. You know, there are so many things that is so rampant. And then, what about the situation of Manipur that's taking place? Terrorizing each other's. Killing each other. There we see dishonesty. We see injustice. We see the people suffering there because of 
what is being rampant in our society these days. So only when we hear the word of God and only when we apply that in our life, only then, only when we put out into actions, we will only be able to see a better society, a better community, a better place for all of us. And also here, John the Baptizer talks about generosity. How about us? Are we sharing the little source, resources that we have to those who are in need? Did we see of uh, people, our brothers and sisters, our neighbors, you know, running away from their own homes because of the persecution that they, they face? Are we sharing with them? Are we helping them out? I keep on hearing of, uh, from the pastors from different places that there, there's many pastors, many uh, Christians are being persecuted. They were not given the freedom to profess their faith. They cannot live there anymore. They have to run for their life. And they're sheltering somewhere else. And for us, we are comfortable. We don't face any such till now. And we are not able to understand how much those people who face persecution, how much they are suffering. But today's scripture taught us to be generous, to be kind, and to love our neighbors. And how about the churches that has been burned down in Manipur? They will take some time to rebuild that churches that has been burned down. How do we have, are we thinking, or are we praying, are we have the concern to help them out, to reveal the churches that has been burned down to ashes? And not only in Manipur, but in different parts of this country, in, in our country. How about, are we doing something to help to help out and to reach them out. And church, I would like to remind us this very afternoon, not only with genuine repentance and coming to God, we'll be enabled to help us to live a life that is worthy before the sight of God. And talking about the repentance, let me you know, quickly bring out something from my life. At one point of time, when I completed my high school, I say, I, when I go out for my father's studies, you know, there will, I know that there will be so many things around me that will distract me. I will not go into that. I make that, sta that stand, the firm commitment. I went, that, I went there you know, to the place where I have to study, out of from my home, out of from my state. But God is not there with me. I was not with God. I hardly attend the church. I hardly read the Bible. I hardly have a uh, prayer, prayer life. I was trying my best you know, to focus on my studies. And one way or the other, I was distracted. My life was completely and totally in different direction. But when I realized that this thing will not let me go to further. And there's a point of time that, you know, there's a lot that is happening in my life. But I repented. I repented. You know, when I repented, a genuine repentance, all the burdens that I've been going through, the guilty that I've been facing, the things that I have not seen before, the things that I have not thought about before, now, when I truly repented, now God helped me out, lifted my burden, and I was at peace. That was the beautiful thing that I encountered in my life. And reacting to my repentance, when God calls me, you know, I surrendered my life for full-time full ministry. Of course, there is up and down in my life. And when I joined the full-time ministry, there was a time when I went through a lot. No, I'm going to be honest with you. Being a full-time staff, being a pastor, there are times that I went through a lot. And I don't want sometimes 
I, I feel like I'm not good enough, worthy enough to face my congregation at times. You know, some times back, I was going through a, a time of, you know, the, um, spiritual um, hardship because I failed to keep my promise and I was going through a lot of guiltiness in my life. And I, could, I did not, you know, right away turn to God, but I keep on with that, live on with that guilt. You know, that doesn't help me a lot in my ministry, in my personal life. But when I repented, there was a time in one morning I repented. I cried out to God. And he, that very morning, I encountered afresh. And I received the forgiveness from our Lord. You see, that I'm overweight. You know, I have... Um, you know, to a knee problem because of my overweight. You know, I'm trying to work it out on that. You know, when I receive the forgiveness of God, you know, there's, I feel so light. My burdens has been lifted up. You know, the guilt that has been pushing down, you know, it's not there anymore. But the forgiveness that I receive the genuine repentance that pours out from my heart, you know, it gives me joy, pure joy. And that morning, I have a meeting to attend. I took my scooty and went out. Last yesterday, also, I talked about feeling a petrol from the petrol pump. Yes, I rushed into the petrol pump to feel what is required. You know, sometimes we look at the meter of the petrol in the petrol pump, whether it will be they would rightly do or give the right amount of what we need. We look at that. I don't even look at that. I was simply standing, you know, thinking about what has gone done in my life. And suddenly, you know, the, the guy who is giving the patrol, you know, he spilled it on my clothes. He spilled it out, not a small quantity, but he spilled it out everything, you know, wet all my, from my shirt to my pants. And then, uh, you know, I don't react to him. I just say, okay, he don't even say sorry, but I say, it's okay, it's okay. And I have to attend a meeting, and then I don't have the time to go back home and, you know, to dress up again. But I happily, I smile, with smile, I drove uh, for my meeting place. And then I was shocked. I don't believe myself. I don't even react to that guy. You know, sometimes my co-workers will know me. Uh, sometimes how I react, they will know me better. No, I don't even react because the forgiveness that I receive from God is, is it's much beyond uh, what I deserve. And the small thing that has been, you know, spilled on not soon be the way that I should react against that person. But I have received the forgiveness, and then, you know, I ought to forgive that person. So church, yes, you know, things could come and knock at us. Everywhere, anywhere, we are called to be different from the rest of the world. And let us keep that in mind. In our workplaces, in our family, uh, in the streets, or even buying things in the market, everywhere. Let us make the difference and make our place a better world. And the preceding verse, uh, John the baptizer, he makes some clarifications when the people ask, are you the uh, Messiah? The messianic fever is at peak at that time. They're waiting for the Messiah to come. They are counting, they are calculating, they were reading the Bible, they're looking for the signs. The fever of Messiah is at peak at that time. So they asked, are you the Messiah? John gave some clarifications. So, but I would like to bring it out to all of us here today. I would like this asked to all of us. I asked myself this morning, even myself, the people at that time, they have this messianic uh, fever. But what about us? 
are we also anticipating for the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ? Are we okay with our life like this? Are we like, don't come yet? No, I want to live a life. No, do we have that fever like those time, the zone, the baptizer's time? I don't know about you, but sometimes I forget about that. But this very morning, it makes me to ponder upon again you know, how we should live and how should also anticipate for the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have to prepare everything, every day of our life that has been reminded. And here when Zon, the baptizer, gave that clarification, he gave that to all of us. You know, the judgment is not to uh, scare us or to uh, uh, intimidate us or to make, inflict fear in us. But the judgment, the message of judgment that John the baptizer preached is rather about an encouragement for us to be prepared for the judgment that is to come. That is at hand. It will happen. It will come. So we need to prepare with that. But for us, the best thing that has done for us is the cross of Jesus Christ. He took all, our, all our iniquities, all our sins, and on that cross, he laid down his life. He shed his blood for all of us. And today, church, I would like to invite us to the Lord's table that has been prepared. Our Lord Jesus Christ has prepared everything for us. Let us become, come before the table of the Lord with a genuine repentance. Pray for yourself. Pour it out to him if there's anything that is hindering between him and you. Pour it out. Take a moment of prayer as the uh, ushers, as our friends come and prepare for the table. Take a moment, take a time of prayer, pondering upon what John the baptizer has spoken uh, to us. I would like to request the ushers uh, to come forward. Church, I invite all of us who are baptized and who have our personal relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to come and partake at his table. I request Lito to pray for the bread. Let me pray. Our Father God in heaven, through your sacrifice of your Son, and through his endurance in pain and in suffering, that has been overcome. And yes, we have received forgiveness, and we have been safe and redeemed. Today, as we, your beloved children, come here together to partake in the living breath of the Father, we once again remind ourselves all the burdens that you have borne to us, Heavenly Father, as we partake this bread, help us to discern the Lord's body and also to come to you as a members of the body of Christ. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we also thank you that through your broken body and through the stripes that we have paid for us, you have given us new life, you have made us whole completely, and that we claim healing in your name. At this time, I surrender the bread and our entire life unto your mighty loving hand, believing that you will sanctify it and let your love and grace be upon it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I would also like to request Nipeto to pray for the cup. Shall we pray? 
Lord Jesus, we thank you for the life that you gave us on the Calvary cross. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the blood that has been shed for us, for our sins, Lord. Lord, this morning we remember you. We remember and acknowledge the price that you have paid for all of us, Lord. Lord Jesus, as you have taught us, we come together to partake together this cup in your remembrance. Lord, may you remind us again that your love is greater than our sins. Lord, as we partake this cup in your name, Lord, prepare our hearts so that we will receive by faith. And as we receive by faith, Lord, we will be blessed again. And again, we will be reminded that, Lord, we have a greater purpose in life for which you have paid for each and every one of us. Father, you cleanse us again by your Holy Spirit and by your blood. Lord, we surrender the cup and surrender all of our lives into your mighty care. And may we always remember the price that you have paid for us. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Church, shall we prayfully partake together the bread? Shall we also bravely partake together the cup? Shall we pray? O oh Lord God, we thank you also for the new month that you have given to us. Lord, there are so many things that is ahead of us. Guide us strengthen us and help us O oh lord to fulfill the life that you have given to us the purpose that you have given to us and also as a community that you have called us to do help us to bring it down what's best for others and for us and for you O oh lord to that end we commit our lives to you in jesus name we pray amen so we also receive the benediction May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit raise and abide with all, especially with our assistant pastor, Mr. Lungria, now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord bless you.